Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcoxon, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor, This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, welcome back in Richards, Carter Wilcoxon, uh, coming to you from my my lair, I guess, in Phoenix, Arizona. And I am, of course, joined by my fantastic Mr. Chemical Free Body co-host himself, Tim James. Tim, how are you doing, my man? Hey, man, I'm doing good. I think I've got... uh... I met with a septic guy today on my parents' property, so that was a big deal. So now we know how we're going to lay that out, and now all the dominoes are falling. The road's coming in. Plans just got submitted for the shop. I'll be submitting the house plans very soon, yada, yada, yada. So I'm very excited because um, I'll be moving back home to eastern Oregon. Um, I bought myself a trailer. I'll be trailer living for the first time in my life. But it's it's a pretty nice trailer. It's got a – it's got a – you know, those slide out deals and it's got a Island in it for a kitchen. And I did, you know, I'll tell you how committed I am to my health Carter. You know, I did that one year whole research thing to find the best bed ever. Yep. Well, I bought the bed and I got a King. Well, the darn, um, these, uh, travel trailers, most of them don't take a a King. So what am I going to do for the next eight months? Not sleep on this bed? Like, this. the worst thing about having this bed is now you don't want to go on vacation because you don't want to leave your damn bed. You want to take it with so, you everywhere. So I called the owner up, and he hooked me up, and I got a queen-size one. So Nice. I just put that in place last weekend. So now when I move and I get settled in, I'll put the king in, and then I'll give the queen to my mama. Well, you know what? She's... She is a benefactor as well as she should be. So Yes, but guess what? People are thinking, well, you're a jerk. Why don't you just give it to your mama now? Because I love my mama, and to be able to take care of her, I got to take care of myself because I put myself first. That's why I'm moving back there. So I need the energy. I need that good sleep to take care of her and my dad. So there's the there's the message I will leave people with today. Put yourself first. It's very important. Nice. Yeah, yeah, because if you, if you can't help anybody – well, it's kind of like whenever you, you know, flying on a plane, what are, what are the, you know, they're like, if you got kids, take care of yourself first and then you take care of your kids. Yeah, then put the air mask on the kids, otherwise you both die. Yes. That's exactly. that's the motto. So, Whitney, thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited to hear your story. Carter's going to suck all the goodness out of your story so we can share it with all of the enrichers and um, hopefully inspire them and motivate them to uh, – live a productive life, especially if they're in the financial services industry or, or if there's just, you know, the lay people like me now, I don't, my licenses are all gone. I'm just a, I'm just a working class citizen. I'm, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so deal. they might, they might listen, be listening and they might want to hire you. We don't know. We don't know who's listening. Yeah. Okay. Thank who's you for listening today, me. Carter? Yeah. I know who is listening. They're cool. They're super cool. We can promise you if they're listening to the health and wealth podcast, a couple of things. Number one, we're guaranteeing you that they're cool. And number two, um, mm-hmm. they probably want to hear about how they can live a more abundant life. And we are here to share that with them. So with all that being said, Whitney Emanuel, um, we are really pleased to be able to have you here on the Health and Wealth Podcast. And how are you doing today? I'm excellent. Thank you. The sun is shining and um, I'm happy. So, um, where's it shining at? Where are you at? I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My cousin used to live there. Well, I mean, and, and that and my guess would be that's why you're pleased because it's not always shining in Minnesota, right? And it's, um, no, but it's, you know, you know what, springtime, right? It's springtime and things are blooming there. Yeah. We don't really have good, we have maybe like two weeks of spring and then it's summer. So it's the land <laughs> of extremes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Fantastic. And walleye and pike and crappies and bluegill. Walleye and is probably all. what we're most known for. Yeah. Wow. Which is cool. tasty. Just don't so, stick your finger in their mouth. No, not a good idea. They got sharp teeth. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that sounds like something that uh, is not very edible. Is no, it it's just... very edible. Oh, no, it's tasty. Oh. But they yeah. will eat your finger. <laughs> 
So it's definitely not like a bass. No. I don't know. It's kind of like a, I don't know, a cross between a bass and a barracuda. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. Oh. But that would actually be a, maybe that's a pike, though. That would be a more better descriptor of a pike, but. Yeah. What, kind of, what about a salmon and a bass? How about that? Okay. I'll go with that. It's like a small yes. salmon, like a kokanee salmon that yep. just, but... you know, decided to dress up like Dracula. Has some sharp teeth. <laughs> No, but they're really tasty, and what you do, Carter, is you steal leaders, and then they can't bite through the line. That's how you do it. Well, thank goodness. Now I know. (laughs) All right. Well, that shows a wrap. Now you guys know how to catch walleye. Um, All right. We'll be getting into how to bait your hook. (laughs) (laughs) You're better for it, Carter. Uh, Well, thank you for that, for, you know, both of you. I really do appreciate it. You know, it's funny. I mean, I'm born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas. You would think I would know all about fishing and hunting. But, you know, I just never ended up getting uh, – I never went down that route. Who who was the country singer that sang a song about, about Little Rock? Was it uh, Reba McIntyre? Don't ask me. I can't remember. It's in my head. I don't want to sing it, though, because it'll butcher it. Yeah. I can't really remember it. So, All right. Well, let's get into everything yeah. Whitney. 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 Whitney, Whitney Wilkes. Yes. .com. Yes, Whitney, thank you so much. So um, as is the, you know, the, the stereotypical uh, way that we like to uh, interview, we want to find out, the enrichers really want to know uh, what your journey has really been like. So so let's go, you know, back in time, if you will, the way, way back machine and okay. um, share with the enrichers, you know, what was it that, you know, initially led you down the path? of getting into the financial services business and and ultimately having a heart for helping people out? Well, when I was in college, I didn't even really know what a financial advisor did. I thought maybe they were a money coach or something along those lines and help people budget. Like I, I had no idea about the investment side or insurance sales side or anything like that. Um, When I was in college, I majored in linguistics, so it wasn't even related to finances. Uh, It wasn't a goal of mine to become a financial advisor. Um, And so, but I needed a job after college. So I went on to Monster and I checked the box, financial advisor. I did minor in econ. That's that's maybe one. And I'm I'm very good with my money. I'm very responsible. I've been... I was diagnosed a little bit of a rabbit trail, but I was diagnosed with type one diabetes when I was seven years old. So I had to grow up very quickly and get super responsible. And so that translated into many areas of my life, including saving a bunch of money with my first job. So, and I knew other people weren't good with their money and thought, oh, I could help them. Um, So I checked the box on Monster and Ameriprise recruited me into the industry. I think they tended to recruit a lot of people who are graduates from college because they're easy to train. And so uh, I had already worked two several jobs. I worked ever since I was 14 and I had sales experience, online customer service experience already. I was calling donors uh, for college. So they already knew that I had phone experience. Um, and then I came on board at Ameriprise and my client, I just fell in love with the people. I mean, and then I, of course, had to do all the training and all the exams, and they paid for it. They sponsored you, so I didn't have to pay for it. So, and then I got thrown a list of orphaned clients, is what they call it. So, you know, people who are clients of Ameriprise have products with Ameriprise, but no longer have a relationship with an advisor, and we would call them. And uh, that was my first taste of the industry, which was no, you know, it was pretty challenging because usually they were disgruntled customers. Um, yeah, they, but, lost their, their, they lost their advisor. They're like, what, why am I even with why? this anymore? Yeah. Who are you? I don't know who you are. And why are you calling me about my universal life insurance product or whatever it was? Right. Sure. So, um, but the idea was to build trust and rebuild relationship with them. And I still have many of those clients to this day who I converted to become my clients. So yeah, that's how I got into it. Wow. So, um, so then your so your very first, um, career move into the financial advisory space because you were responsible with money, you thought, well, you know what, maybe I can do that. 
yeah. um, which, which I think is interesting. But you did have an uh, economics minor or something when you're in college. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Gotcha. And then um, so how long were you at Ameriprise, which became your foundation to understanding, you know, the financial services yep. you know, world and, and what all that encompasses? Yep. Three years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, so how would you say the, um, I mean, other than they're like, get in there and just smile and dial and here's all your orphan accounts and, you know, try to bring somebody over. How, how do yeah. you feel like, you know, were you like thrown to the wolves? Did you feel like that? Or do you feel like they sort of nurtured you along the way? I think they did nurture. So the model, it was an advisor center and it was, so I was a W2 employee. So I had a base, very modest base salary, like, 20 something thousand, but then you made commissions on top of it. And so I thought it was generous. I know many people who get into the financial industry, it's just not, you make nothing until you convert your first client. So I did like that model, although I think they lost a lot of money on us. Um, And because, you know, not everybody made it right. And so uh, I did like that they did that. They provided training weekly. They had team meetings every week. We had Oh, and a manager who would hop on a calls with us. And so it was very hands-on at the beginning. Um, and then one thing about Ameriprise that I do appreciate is that they are about holistic financial planning. They don't just push products. So that is one thing that I really did appreciate about the training. And I did learn a lot. And I had a really excellent first manager as well um, who helped me grow in my role. So, but, you know, I love the people and I'm, very much a people person and I'm naturally good at sales. So I think that helps financial advisors more than being good at numbers, honestly. And so um, I had that advantage going in because, oh, go ahead. No, no, that's perfect. Because uh, what I was going to say is, you know, the, the, the phraseology that I use on a regular basis as, you know, uh, we work with advisors, you know, we're advisors to advisors. Um, I tell them on a regular basis, right? I mean, if you don't understand that you're in the relationship business, you're in the wrong business. Right. right? I mean, it, it's not, it's not about your clients and or prospects. I'm generalizing here, right? Your clients and or prospects, they already know that you've got products to sell them or you, you know, you can manage money or you can do whatever. They want to know that they can have a, a trustworthy person that they can believe in, right? It's, it's the old adage of, People do business with those that they know, they like, and they trust. That's right. right? And that'll never, ever, ever change, no matter how much robo advising, you know, uh, comes into, you know, in vogue or or not. So anyway, I mean, you you make a a very valid point that it really is about how good of a relationship you can help to cultivate for these these clients more so than how you can sell them a product or a solution. They don't care about that. Yeah. So, um, So since you sort of had this natural gravitation towards sales, was there something early on? You mentioned that you started working when you were 14. Talk a little bit about what your early experiences were. um, You know. Oh, sure. Uh, My first job was Dairy Queen. Best job ever. Um, It was my summer job. And so it was a seasonal one, too. Uh, And, oh, another thing, too, that I'll say, two things that I think you have to be good at when you're in a financial advisor and or running your own business one sales and people you have to care about people okay. um but number two i would say is you have to be good at uh, managing multiple tasks and doing multiple things um and because when i was when i had a job i was in school and i played sports so i was always doing all three uh, and i had to balance those things in my life and prioritize what was most important so that i'd say i learned young as well but Dairy Queen was my first job. Uh, I worked there for nine years every summer. Wow. Like, all the way through college. I loved it. Peanut butter uh, buffet. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. And um, the cool thing, my man, my, the owner actually trained every employee in. And uh, he was all about customer service, anticipating someone's needs before they even asked. So I clearly remember him training. I can see it happening. Like a- ask them for napkins before they even see, ask you see if they need them. Make sure you're always, yeah, anticipate their needs first. Was like just- Radar uh, O'Reilly for you MASH watchers. Yes, yeah. Um, Chop- so he was, 
<laughs> he was great. And then another thing too, is that we could get tips. So that was yeah. also a motivation at getting really good at talking to people, making them smile, making sure you were really good at what you did. So that was my first job. Um, and we would have tip contests, <laughs> nice. uh, you know, at the two windows and it was the window walk up one, uh, that it was, is was oh, the kind okay. that it was. So that's why it was seasonal. Um, so that was my first job. Then I worked, did online customer service for a company that my mom worked for. And so doing online customer service was a totally different interface, but I'd say was definitely a little bit more technical. Um, you had to be detailed. Uh, you had, to, you didn't want to get complaint, you know, any type of complaint that went up to management, so always trying to make people happy, um, anticipating their needs. So I'd, a lot of my sales experience is more customer service, but I think that is the best way to do sales is more customer centric. Um, what else? I Oh, I worked as a hostess at a restaurant for throughout college, so I was the face of the restaurant. So when people walk in the door, making them feel welcome, making them happy, getting them their drink orders, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that was another one. Um, oh, and then the, the owner of that restaurant was all about how you present yourself and making sure, sure that you uh, are representing. It was a fine dining restaurant. So sure. that first, was another one. First impression, right? First impression. So we had one chance to make a first impression. Bingo. So that was another one. And then when I was in another job in college that I had for a year, my first year was calling donors because I, I went to Hillsdale College, it's a conservative school in Michigan, and uh, they don't take any federal funding. So they uh, want people to, they need donors to donate. And so I would call people and ask them for money. <laughs> nice. Which, and again, you did contests to make it fun and woke up early in the morning. So you had to have a lot of discipline to do it as well. Um, but so I had, yeah, a breadth of experience yeah. Uh, well, before I had my first real job, I guess you could. Yeah. Well, Whitney, Whitney, I got to tell you, it's a, it's an interesting um, uh, backstory, and and it kind of aligns with a lot of my, you know, before I was a grown up, right? And, you know, my first job. So I was uh, I was fourteen, and I know this is all about Whitney Emanuel, and we're going to get back to Whitney, but the parallels are, are interesting. That okay that we're both in the same, you know, line of work, right? The financial yeah. services business. So I lied about my age when I was 14 to get a job flipping burgers at a, a restaurant <laughs> called Delights of America back in Shawnee, Kansas. And, um, you know, cause you'd be 16 at the time. Okay. And so, you know, it wasn't a small town, you know, Kansas city, fairly, fairly big city anyway. So, um, I ended up doing that, but it, there was a lot of like similarities to like the dairy queen. And, uh, it was, you know, there was two other stores like that. So, you know, the owners, you, you saw them every single day. It was pretty normal, uh, you know, mom and pop place, so to speak. But that ended up eventually getting me into becoming a national trainer for P.F. Chang's. And, uh, you know, so I've been in the restaurant business forever. You know, I worked at Hula Hands. I worked at, I mean, it feels like my entire life. But that gave me such and then I became a bartender. And, you know, as a bartender, mm -hmm. you can really get a, a sense of how to multitask right, that you were talking about. Um, and, and it really has served me well coming from that, so much so that it's not necessarily a prerequisite to work at CSI Financial Group, but it's one of those things that we look for. It's more important to us if you've had restaurant experience than it is if you have a college degree. I think restaurant experience prepares you in such an excellent way for any client service job. It makes a world of a difference. Yeah. And yeah. people are jerks, you know, yeah. so you have to, you have to learn how to make unhappy people happy. Yep. You know, that's not really easy to do. Um, and so, you know, compared to when people want to work with you and they want to hire you, it's <laughs> easy. Right. And so yep. just trying to understand what people want and anticipating their needs. Yeah. It's makes such a difference. It, it really does. So it's a, um, I love your background. Obviously, I, I appreciate your background probably more than uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say most, but definitely I have a, a unique perspective on, yeah. on on how you got to where you're at because much in the same way that that uh, that I did, right? So, 
Um, is there anything else about, you know, uh, your background? In fact, let me ask you, you mentioned you played sports and maybe we'll go into a break after this, but you mentioned that you played sports. So talk a little bit about that because that's another aspect that is a, is a great pre-training, if you sure. will, on teamwork. So talk a little bit yep. about that. Yeah, I played softball. That was my, I played b- basketball and softball when I was really young. And then, but then I chose softball as my main sport. Um, what position did you play? Uh, may, I ended up shortstop and third, but mainly, and then I ended up when it got fast pitch, it was third and catcher. Cause third fast fun. Pitch, it's very fun. Oh, catching. Uh, it's actually kind of scary in that league. Cause you guys are so close with those. Oh, like now they have like, I was, I was back home at my hometown and just to give a baseball lesson for those that are listening, like mm-hmm. when I was growing up, I had a 33 inch bat. And it was 30 ounces. So Uh they called those, we didn't even call them then, but they would have been called a minus three. So Uh it's called, it's three, three less than the length. Uh So then they came out with minus five bats. So that means the 33 ounce bat would only be 28 ounces. So it's lighter and you can swing it quicker, which means more bounce off the bat. I said, you guys still got those minus tens. And she's like, I just, there's this guy swinging a bat and he was swinging a softball bat and he was a baseball player. And the gal was a, softball player at eastern oregon my hometown and she's like no we have like minus 15s now or something i'm like what and i'm like why would you want to ever be a pitcher or play third or first i'm like oh, no it's so intense yeah it was very but you i can't, like you gotta be ready i like the speed of it and uh i remember one year just to get into sports memories but one year i had a triple play that was the that was probably the I prefer defense. I, I was a good batter, but I like defense better because I like the fast movement of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had a line drive. No, was it a line drive? Were you playing no. third? I, I was no, it was a grounder. It was I was on third, the bases were loaded. Mm-hmm. Um so I fake threw it home. I tagged the runner, touched third, and then threw it to first. <laughs> that was a good play. Wow. That yeah. was a really good play. And done. Time to hit again. <laughs> and the ending's over. <laughs> <laughs> Base is loaded. Yeah, we're just right. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yeah. That's a big, that's a mental, that's a big emotional shift right there in a game. You know, yeah. so, so I don't know if this would happen to you, but I remember, so Tim played baseball. I played baseball. You played softball, okay. right? Yeah. So it never seemed to fail that – when you would make like a great defensive play, you were like up to bat immediately. I don't know yes, what you're right. It That's always true. felt like it coincided with the great play you made. Like, all right, now I got my batting helmet on. I'm going to hit now. I'm ready to go. Yeah, you're right. That did happen a lot, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... That's true. I never even thought of put thought about that, but you're so right. You're so amped, ready to hit a homer. Yeah, totally. Because nothing, nothing like you made the last out, the last inning, and you're like. All right. Well, I guess I'll be sitting here rooting on the rest of my team until the lineup comes back around. So, Awesome. Well, there's no better place to take a break than a little baseball talk. So we'll take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get more into what Whitney's up to in today, right now, in this present moment, helping people with their money. We'll be right back. Estate planning. What does that even mean? When the inevitable happens for everyone on this planet, your estate plan kicks into action. But first, let's start with what an estate is. An estate is simply everything you own. Now, here's the issue and what needs to be understood when this event occurs. You only have two choices on this plan. Number one, either you plan how your estate gets handed out and distributed to those you leave behind. Or number two, your state decides who gets everything you own. For the first time ever, you can now take complete and total control of this plan that you've been deprived of for most of your life and generations before you. You can get personalized assistance along the way with a team of specialists whose job it is to make sure you have true peace of mind. It's important to understand that estate planning is a journey and rest assured that our team will be available to you all along the way and at every step. Welcome to eState Plan home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. To learn more, make sure to reach out to your local advisor licensed with us or go to our website for more information.
What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here. I'm back with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. And today in the house, we have Whitney from WhitneyWealthGroup.com. I like saying that. You got the double W. That's smart. That's, right. That's good. Whitney, Whitney Wealth. Good so, Whitney, mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, um, you told me earlier where you were from because you said it was sunny. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Or it was, was Minneapolis. It? Oh, yeah, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Minnesota, that's right. We talked about fishing. How did I forget that? Yeah. I was looking at the NPH thing behind you and I was I got NPH USA. What is that? I'm it's on her door and it's on the I don't yeah. know, it's a kid's logo. Like I said, it's co working space. So Oh, okay. Got businesses it. Businesses in here, yeah. Got it, I got it, I got it. So just tell us about what your what's your practice like. So obviously, you know, you're a smart woman. Um you started at Ameriprise, but then usually people that are really smart leave don't there. Say. <laughs> Leave the Edward Jones. There's no offense for people working there. Some people stay there the whole time, but a lot of people they start realizing like that. Um, I can only sell what they want me to sell, and right. I don't really own my clients. And you know, but yep. they do give you a free laptop and pay for your Series Seven. So you know, for some reason, I mean, they dirt paid broke. For some that's stuff. a good idea. What's that? Some, yeah, they paid for some stuff. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I definitely left after... move your your families. They you still make they still have you make a list of your family and friends and. They go after them first. They, I think, well, so I was on the employee model where, you know, they gave us those orphan clients. So mm-hmm. they didn't, they wanted us to convert the orphans and get more wallet share. That was like our, where most of our energy was placed. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. I, did, cool. I did end up naturally getting some friends and family, but it wasn't a big push, fortunately. So why did you break free of there? Why'd you go out on your own? So it was an employee model, um, meaning that, you know, I did not own uh, you know, my business or my clients. And then they changed the model. Uh, they, we were on teams, but each person independently had their own clients on the team. And then we just put our production together. But what they were going to do was combine all our clients into one pool on the team. And then different people on the team would have different roles. And I said, I'm not going to share my clients with people that I didn't choose. And, uh, they were, they gave us some new stupid names. Like I was going to be client relationship manager or something. I'm like, I'm a financial advisor. I'm not a client relationship <laughs> manager. So, and, uh, I stayed, I, so at the time that they were making changes, I was pregnant, married and pregnant. I decided that after I got back from maternity leave and I stayed for the required 30 days to not get it taken away, I would leave. And so that's what I did with my newborn baby and uh, went to New York life. I was only 20. I was young. I was because I started straight out of college. So I was only 25 at the time. And I went to New York life because I didn't know anything about anything yet. And so they recruited me pretty aggressively. I was there for a few years. Um, I was there for actually I was there for about four years, almost five years. Um, and I learned a lot about insurance and whole life in particular, but they did have a wealth management side and I was not restricted to just New York like products, uh, coming in with experience. However, my payout was lower because I wasn't selling their products. So, um, but I built a lot of really good friendships there. And then I went independent, uh, that was, how long I'm doing the math three years ago. Wow. So Whitney wealth has been around for three years. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I had started it when I was at New York life, like the LLC. Um, so that, so technically five years, but I branched off three years ago and so I could do whatever I wanted. Yeah. So, uh, so talk a little bit about what it's been like. Um, cause, cause you're obviously, a. um, a fan of cost effectiveness, right? Cause I know you, you have office share, you're in this, this shared office environment and we work type of a thing. Right. Yep. Um, exactly right. And then, um, and then over the last two years, like what's it been like for you? Cause you're a year into it. Then all of a sudden everything shuts down. What, what has your practice been like? Yeah. And, and I'll make a safe assumption that you've really embraced technology and digital transformation and, and, and 
a lot of advisors that have been on the Health and Wealth podcast. And, and Richards, thank you again for joining us today. Um, a lot of our advisors, actually, they've been benefited by things that have happened over the last yeah. few years, not necessarily a hindrance. And it sort of accelerated their idea of how they wanted to do, you know, run their business anyway. Yeah. So I was already operating virtually before COVID happened. So it was, so for that reason, it was essentially no disruption to my business. I can't, I canceled my, I had a co-working space even before COVID and I canceled it because I'm not going to pay for an, you know, office space that I'm not going to go into. I was already operating off of a uh, virtual uh, because I have clients like when I started at Ameriprise, the orphan clients actually that I started with were on the East coast. You were assigned a region. Oh. So I was in Minnesota, but I chose to work with East coast because I prefer, I like people on the East coast. I like how they're honest. And that's where my mom and dad are actually from. And I was born in Massachusetts, although I grew up in Minnesota. So I wanted to, to work with people on the East coast. And so a lot of those people, like I said, have stayed with me. I've had clients move. So I have clients in California and Washington. I've got clients in Pennsylvania and New York and New Jersey and Texas and Alaska. So uh, COVID wasn't a disruption because my clients are all over the place. The only thing that may have been a little bit of a drawback were, was that events, online events are just not good. And yeah. I, you can't really meet it's not a great place to meet new people. So I focused then more on gaining referrals from my clients and referral partners than going to events. And over the last six months, I've gotten a huge influx of referrals, probably from all the work that I put into um, trying to really hone in on that. Uh, and yeah, but it was not really a much of a change to my business because everything was already virtual. All my files have been virtual. I don't ever see my marketing lady and I have a, an assistant, you know, Oh, and my assistant is my mother too. Oh, so keep it, keep it in the family. I love it. Yes. So, and she's an excellent assistant overqualified, I'm sure. Of but, course. um, of course. So yeah, it's, it's just us three and we're all local, but we don't need to meet in person and it works really well. Nice. That, that's awesome. So, um, then how would you describe then um, your range, I guess, let's, not specifically, but what is the range of the clientele that you that you were working with? Is there, a, is there certain like a niche that you work with? Or uh, obviously, since you've been so accustomed to, you know, your Ameriprise Foundation, you know, you're probably, you know, got an idea on who your ideal client is. What does your ideal client look like? Yeah, it's... Uh purpose driven or really values driven executives. Um, so they, they're not money driven people, although they understand that money has its value. And so, but they just don't have the time to manage it. They usually have children um, and they're in their prime earning years. So high level executives or CEOs um, and they know they need help. And so that's, those are essentially, yeah, the people that I work with. And like I said, that is the really important thing is that values and purpose driven because um, if they care about money and that's one of their core values, for example, it's probably not a great fit. I want people who care about more things than just money. Well, so that's actually, um, I like to give, you know, Tim has his core four. So I'm going to share with you something that I have uh, talked a lot about with respect to, you know, helping advisors sort of articulate their kind of ideal clients and how they ultimately grow their practice is by having what we call a 4A client. And I think it lines up perfectly with what you're talking about. So what are the four, what are the four A's? The four A's are clients who have the right attitude with the right aptitude with the proper amount of assets who can become an advocate for you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can multiply uh, your 4A clients, it's going to ultimately make your practice exponentially grow, right? So, so yeah. that's my uh, that that's sort of my uh, my my message that you know what we really try to do here, you know, at CSI Financial and, and then ultimately our uh, estate planning company, Epic Services, is really to help to cultivate those 4A clients and try to help advisors understand that just stay just stay narrow if you can keep 
the understanding that these are really the ideal. It can't just be the assets, right? Mm -hmm. Because the ass and assets is not what you want to have as a client, right? right. You really want to have clients that that encompass and, and uh, encapsulate, you know, all of those forays, right? Because right. you can get the raving fan, aka advocate, to say, Whitney is, I mean, they can't help everywhere they go. They have to tell everybody they know, you've got to talk to Whitney because she is absolutely amazing. If you can get more of those like advocates and raving fans, that ultimately will help your practice. Mm -hmm. I have a few of those. They're amazing. Yeah, they, there's, um, there, there's no doubt about it. So uh, then what is the, the age range? I'm just curious, you know, the enrichers want to know what's the age range, you know, that you're working with, you know, from how young to how old, does your client uh, base look like? Well, I've got clients all across the board, mm -hmm. um, especially too, because I'll sometimes work with my client's kids. Um, but so I, I just had a 90 year old client pass away all the way down to my youngest client is 28, I think. However, I'd say my ideal is between 40 and 55, okay. Man, 40 and 60, 40 and 60. So they uh, have kids usually if they are, if they have kids and most do, um, or they're just preparing for retirement, but, but they're still working. So. Sure. sure. So, um, so it's a, it, it's a broad range, but obviously again, we're just talking ideal, right? If you can replicate your ideal client list, they'd be 40 to 60 with some kids and married. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, 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 uh, that makes perfect sense. So you, you mentioned earlier a little bit about, um, you know, referral partners. So what have you done with respect to like gaining referral partners, uh, in your practice? Yeah, I have a referral group that I'm a part of. It's like a strategic referral group of women in finance. So it includes a banker, a CPA, an estate and business planning attorney, and then a commercial insurance uh, person. So we are a referral group. We get together once a month and we talk about our practices. We support each other, both in business and personally, but then we refer people to each other, but it's organic. It's not like B&I. Um, <laughs> no offense, B and I. <laughs> Just not a fan. Um, yeah. And then, um, so that's one thing that I've done to get more strategic. I um, do a lot of actually uh, like classes. Um, and so that I send to a lot of my referral partners. So for example, this next, it's on Thursday, we're, we're doing a class on marriage and money. Mm -hmm. And we are featuring actually a licensed psychotherapist. And um, we're going to talk about money and uh, communication surrounding money and how can you make that functional and healthy and uh, I invite all people to that but I like to invite my referral partners because they're free and I like to um, you know make sure that they know that I have these resources out there for them and their clients and lastly I always send them swag I mean that's an easy nice. one to do but it's just you know I'm thinking of them I want to make sure that they know that they're on my mind and um, I'll reach out, grab lunch with them. You know, that's just building relationship with them, of course, too. And if I meet someone who I think is a good, could be a good referral partner, I'll circle back with them immediately, um, grab lunch. It's fortune in the follow through. Right. So, yep. yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Well, I know that we're getting ready to go into uh, the third segment and maybe, Tim can allude to uh, something that maybe he might be able to do with respect to, um, you know, bringing an additional value add to your clients that we like to, you know, promote. Um, so, Tim, do you want to talk about that in, in the next segment? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can do it right now. I'll just do it right now and then we'll, then we'll bust it in because we just focus on the health thing at the end. But it's just really simple. It's, you know, the number one concern for people is their health. And I've said it a bunch of times on this show, like the statement from Confucius said that a healthy man wants a thousand things. A sick man wants one. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading a book earlier 
and um, this this like yogic guru Swami guy was talking about basically the same thing. It's like if you if you don't have your health, and it's like it's just it's not fun. Like it's not fun. It doesn't matter how much money you have, you can't even think about it. The only thing you're thinking about is just feeling good when you're in pain. You want to get out of it. Oh, and I know the analogy he used because there was there. I got to tell the story, card. It's awesome. Okay. So there was this this king um, way back in the day, and he's like, "What?" And the king asked everybody around him, "What brings you the most pleasure in life?" or something like that. And and then most of the people there were like, "Oh, king, your face, just being able to serve you." They were all kissing up and stuff. And then this this um, uh, um, guy who was like a, like a, a wise man, he was sat there quiet the whole time. So he finally went up to the wise man where the king got all of his a lot of his counsel from. He said. What's the most pleasurable thing? And he's like, uh, or, or brings you the most pleasure in life. He said, shitting. And um, and he's like, what? And he's like, in front of everybody. Now the king's kind of embarrassed and stuff like that. So he's like, well, you're going to have to prove this. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay for this way you talk to me. And he says, give me a fortnight and I'll prove it to you. And he's like, okay. So what he did was is he arranged uh, this um, special thing for the king out in the woods so they put up his tent and he invited all these women tons and tons of women all the most beautiful women like hundreds and hundreds of them and but he didn't set up the um the toilet tent so the next morning he made that sure there was a feast a grand feast and the king ate everything and he got very full well eventually the king had to go to the bathroom and he was walking around looking for the bathroom and the old man was there the wise man saying he would see him looking around. Now, where would be a good place to put up the the toilet tent? You know, basically whatever they called it back then, the potty, the porta. I don't know what they called it back in 1800s, 1400s, the the potty tent or whatever. And so the king heard him saying that, so he thought that it was going up, and he kept coming out. And he said, "Where should I put that tent?" Well, it, finally it built up. It was like noon, and he had to go. And he said, "Sire, the uh, the, the toilet tent's right over there." He had just put it up, and he <laughs> went over there, and then he walked in. And he's like. Um, so now do you understand why, you know, shitting is the most, in, you know, what gives me the most pleasure? And he goes, yes, I get it. You were right. You were right. You were right. It is the most pleasurable thing. And the whole point he was trying to make was, is that when you're in pain, the only thing you can think of is getting out of pain, right? Now, a lot of people want to get out of their financial pain. That's why they go see Whitney. Mm -hmm. In the next segment, we're going to show you how to get out of your physical pain, if you would like to, whatever that might be. We're going to find out maybe... Whitney's got somebody or something that has some pain or something. I don't know. All right, so we're going to take a break. And when we get back, we're going to get into Whitney's questions about health. We'll be right back. You want the absolute best for yourself, and you want it to be easy. That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical-free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line. Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. What's up, Enrichers? <laughs> and you're also health heroes. Yes, they hey, are. James here. I'm back with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. Uh, we've got Whitney from Whitney Wealth Group in the house. Whitney, this is the segment where we get to flip the script, and you get to ask me any question on health, and I'll just do my best and see how far we get. So what cool. questions do you have for me? Do you – okay, so I've – like I had mentioned at the beginning of the show, I think, or before we were on, uh, I'm a health nut. So I do, you know, you know, I do a lot of research, and I – my next goal is to buy land and grow food and um, do it with a lot of other um, people in the community and my faith community. So that's what's next for me in my life on the personal side. So I agree that health is important and our body is a temple and we have to take really good care of it. So a lot of people know in my life know me as a healthy person as one of my core values. So we could go into the nitty gritty details of stuff. So I'm just more, I want to know your opinion on things, right? Because there are different opinions sure. on health. Um, so do you think that many of these autoimmune diseases that people have, like type one diabetes would be one for me. Um, 
sickle cells that are irreversible. Do you think that they could be cured? Yeah, I think that um, everything, almost, there got to be an asterisk there, because there are some things that are mechanical, like somebody could be born with a birth defect, like a defective heart valve or something like that, where you could do surgery. I don't know if it would be 100%, but those those surgeons can, like, give people a really good quality of life, Mm -hmm. right? But a lot of the underlying things – in my last 11 years, I've seen a lot of people reverse themselves from things that I didn't even think was possible, mm. like literally. So, and I think the most important thing is, is that even if you still have to live with it, right? When you change your lifestyle, you're actually changing the environment and you're changing, when you change that environment that all of your trillions of cells are bathed in, on a daily basis, the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, the bed okay. you sleep on, the makeup, the shampoos, the hair, you know, toothpaste, hair, whatever, you know, sunscreen, anything that comes into contact with your body, you can change with a good environment. You can change how your genes express themselves. Yeah. You can change that. So that means that's, again, that's epigenetics. That's the, um, it's, you know, kind of like terrain theory type thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, um, You know, and a lot of it's like you can go to lots and lots and lots of docs and like they won't know how to help you. And then, boom, you find the right one that has knowledge in that specific area and then they can. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden what was difficult and hard becomes very easy. You're like, oh, Mm -hmm. and then it can change for you. It's just it's kind of like, you know, you want to watch a channel on a television. You just you change if you're off or you're trying to call somebody and you're off one digit. Good luck. You're not going to reach the destination. You're not going to be able to call them because you're off just a little bit. So. Yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, a lot of it's just uh, a person has to become their own doctor. They have to be get committed to their healing process, and they have to change their environment. And then they just – that kind of raises all boats, and they can mm-hmm. start checking things off the list. Okay, well, um, I had mercury fillings. Okay, I got those removed. What's next? Okay, I had a root canal. I got that taken off. I got an implant or I got a bridge. So I stopped that systemic infection. I had a bladder sling. On my, I found, oh, I found a surgeon that can actually remove that. They have new technology today, so I can get that metal out of my body, right? Because having metal in your body or a breast implant uh, is like having a, a sliver in your body, and it creates a 24 hour infection. It's called a systemic infection or internal infection that your immune system has to deal with, but the breast implant or the metal bladder sling can't come out because it's in there, right? But your body's responding to it. It's like foreign object, get it out. Right. And it can't. So it's just it's, – it's a, it's a weight down on your immune system. Now, what I would say for a lot of people that have autoimmune disorders is there's tons of hope, tons of it. They have to just understand about the amount of chemical pollution. Like we're, we're running around trying to figure out what's causing – oh, what's the, how do we cure diabetes and how do we cure cancer and all this stuff? It's like, well, look at the environment. I mean think about it. If you had, if you had two goldfish and you threw a little bit of diesel and – you know, maybe a little polysorbate 80 and, you know, maybe you throw a little, um, some Lysol in that fishbowl In the other fishbowl, you have, you know, fairly clean water, which fish is going to live longer and be healthy. Right. Uh, the, it's pretty self, I mean, it's Obvious. just, it answers itself. If you have common sense, you already know the answer. Yeah. And the difference is, is we're so busy and we can't see these microscopic toxic deals so we just out of sight, out of mind. And we don't understand that, you know, when we buy a new TV that has been, you know, sprayed with um, fire retardants, wh- why they do that? Or your air fresheners that you're plugging into your house, all you're doing is just poisoning you and your family. That's it. Right. You're not really making the air smell that much better, even though you think it is. Like, I go into those places because I've been clean now. That, when somebody puts those things in, those air freshener deals, it's like chemicals. I went out of the house. I didn't want to go in there because I'm clean now and I get it. Their their senses have been dumbed down. They've right. been desensitized, right? And it's from a lot of that stuff. So the paint's off gassing, all these things. So all this stuff for autoimmune, we've seen people have tremendous strides simply by getting their air cleaned up, getting their water right, and start changing the inputs and then stop putting the crap in. And then they take our, you know, like our gut detox and our toxin detox product and then daily start chelating that crap out of the cells, out of the blood serum, out of the fat, out of the muscle tissue, clean up the digestive tract, 
And then the body's kind of amazing. You know, it kind of knows how to heal itself. When you get cut, it, it does a pretty good job while you're, you don't even have to think about it. It just kind of does it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we just kind of get, got to learn about it. We got to get these synthetics out of, out, um, out of the way. And then let and that allows the body to heal. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Um, I agree about the environment. And yeah, I, so like from my own standpoint, I make my, a lot of my own clean or I use cloth cleaning or Norwex cloths. Like I don't use products. Sure. I don't use air fresheners. I don't, I get pure shea butter for my skin and I have an eight year old daughter too. So, you know, I don't, she doesn't get any of that stuff either. Well, at least when she's with me, I don't know when she's with her dad, mm. you know, that's maybe not a battle that I want to fight, but, uh, so yeah. Um, do you, is it reverse osmosis? Is that the type of water? You can. I mean, reverse osmosis is one of the type of purification systems. There's that. There's distillation and deionization. Alkaline. Isn't that um, people... Alkaline's fine. I mean, in nature, if you were drinking river water, it'd be just slightly acidic. But we live in such an acidic, our, our diet's right. so acidic. Because if you right. were living in nature, your di diet would be primarily alkaline. Right. And you'd have a little bit of slightly acid water. That's just, that's how it would be in nature. But because people are so over acid and so toxic and so stressed out and just, you know, they, their body's going haywire, um, especially if you have cancer, it would be a wise thing to do the alkaline water. But you have to be yeah. very careful because if you're going to the store and you're buying alkaline water, all they're doing is putting bacon soda in it typically. And more than one of those a day is going to destroy your gut. So I wouldn't even yeah. drink one of them. You want alkalized water. Yeah. You might want to look up the difference between alkaline and alkalized. It, there's there's a whole talk on it you can watch on these okay. things. And gotcha. it's a big difference. Like one's I good for you it. and one's completely not. Um, yeah, so that is important. But the most important thing is that you want to get your water clean. And if it's on city tap water, restructured. So we've brought this up so much on this show. I hope that I every enricher <laughs> on here should probably be, you guys better have a freaking, you got your water right. If you haven't got your water right by now, you got to get it done. But I would bet right. pretty much most of the listeners have been following us. They probably made some changes to their water because it gets brought up a lot. Water is a mm -hmm. big topic, and it should be because your body's mostly made of what? Water. water. And you need to drink water. a lot of water to be healthy, but it needs to be the right water. So Yeah. And here's okay. the deal. Like I said, if it's in the city tap water, it's went through these high-pressure pipes, so the water molecules have been coagulated. They're too big. They're in, <sighs> they're in like four to five times the cluster of the normal cluster of water so they become like big like bowling balls trying to go through a chain link fence which is your intestinal lining and bowling balls do not go through a chain link fence very well no. so when you restructure the water make it tiny again like sand then it goes right through the chain link fence gets through the intestinal lining into the blood now it has a chance to get into the cell or into the lymphatic system which is your garbage removal system into your brain which your body's your brain's mostly water right and if you don't drink enough, you're literally dumber. Like literally, right. if you're dehydrated, your IQ drops. Like literally, just wow. like it does when you have a, not enough sleep, you get dumb. Huh. So you want to wise up, be like the wise man, right? That uh, told that well, we told that story a minute ago. Um, you would want to get your water right. It's pretty pretty important. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's, it, it's it's crucial. And and then you know one of the things you know just. One last thing on the water aspect, um, and you know, Tim taught me this a long time ago, and I got to tell you that my, my favorite part of our uh, podcast is the third segment where we talk about you know health and everything because without your health, you know, it, it doesn't matter. All the money in the world matters not, right? Um, in fact, you know, someone that speaking of faith based, I don't know if you know Star Jones is or not, Whitney, but um, I was listening one time to uh, her, and she had this saying that I, I've really just made my own whenever I, I talk about health and everything. And, and it's this, if money can solve your problems, you don't really have any problems at all. Right. And what she was alluding to is the fact that, you know, your health, right. It, it doesn't matter. Right. That the wealthiest person on the face of the planet, if that can solve their problem, you know, then they really don't have that many problems at all. But it's whenever, uh, you know, Tim starts talking about restructuring your environment, right? Not just the water, but the air you breathe and the food that you intake and everything. Your environment determines, right? So your input determines your output, right? Mm -hmm. and vice versa. It, it, you know, sort of cyclical, you know, to use a, uh, a financial 
terminology, right? It's cyclical in that whatever you put into it is is what you're going to get out of it and everything. And it's really, it's been so key for me to learn so many different things. And one of them that I want to enrich using glass as opposed to plastic. I mean, how many times we talk about More metal, especially aluminum, because aluminum um, will lead to Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh So that's what we teach people. Only drink out of glass bottles. You can do the super stainless steel, but if you're doing alkalized water that's charged with molecular hydrogen, you're kind of losing the charged water deal because it goes right to the metal. That's why we use glass. But we, we just stay away from, you know, the only liquid that the body wants it needs literally not once, but needs is water. Yeah. So all the other beverages that we drink, eh, not so much. I mean, for for life, you don't really need it. So, but I had and I was it the guy we had on last time or the girl? Somebody said they were drinking like carbonated water or something. Was that a different guess? I had this conversation with somebody and I, I just had to tell them I'm like, look, um, they said is carbonated water good for me? And I said, well, you know, birthdays, parties, special occasions, you know, weddings, not a big deal, but every day. It's going to actually uh, steal minerals. It's going to demineralize your bones and lead to osteoporosis and osteopenia. So stay away from aluminum cans. Stay away from carbonated water. Stay away from alkaline water with baking soda. You just want freaking clean water that's been restructured. That's what your body wants. So figure that out. And if not, mypurifiedwater.com. You can talk to Danusha. She'll help you get your water right. She'll do a free water consult with you. So anyway. Water's a big deal, and if you're going to drink it today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now, why not make an investment in you? Why wouldn't you do that? It's it's so huge. People have no idea. Like I'm literally high on water every day, like high. Mm-hmm. And like people are trying to go you know, take Red Bulls and five-hour energy drinks, right. and they're trying to get jacked up to get through the day because they're so fatigued. Well, we've Carter knows like we've done that. We've cleaned out our gut. We've cleaned up our cells. Our body and our cells are accepting the nutrients that we put in like crazy. That's why we that's why we feel so darn good. And um, and then on top of it, we added this water, and now we're just freaking high. I mean, people think we're on cocaine, and they don't get it. Like everybody can feel this good, and that's what we want. Yeah. We want people to wake up and feel good. You shouldn't have to stimulate yourself just to get through the day. If you're saying right. that to yourself, I'm just trying to take this to get through the day, is that really the that's example you want to set for your kids? And why the hell would you want to come here and do that? I mean – be a martyr i mean i don't get it but well, sometimes we get stuck and we don't know because i was there at one point in time so we have to have yeah. some grace for those folk and we're not trying to make anybody feel bad at all right we're trying to oh i'm trying to be really i'm trying to make people terrible yeah i know you are just uh, kidding but i gotta tell you something the biggest <laughs> takeaway that i got from you um uh, and this might have happened i don't know six eight ten shows ago i remember you saying that you have to make your health a priority the reason mm-hmm. why you're not doing it is it's not a priority, right? right. And I'm like, I, I mean, you almost like, to me, you called me out, but I'm like, you're so right. I need to make my health a priority. It's not like something, well, that'd be nice, but it, no, no, it's a priority. And if you make your health a priority, you were saying something, Tim, not too long ago, that when you prioritize, you actually make more money by prioritizing your health. You were saying something. I can't remember. What well, because I've coached people on this one guy because I was a business coach and I just said, hey, because I knew him. He used to work for me. He was an employee. And then he went and got into sales. I said, hey, Izzy, how much have you made in a month before? Just you know, he called me because he had he had anxiety. And in the middle of closing a client, he could stop talking. He couldn't talk. He just couldn't talk. So we had to write him a note. Somebody else had to come in deal with it, do the paperwork. Know. And, um, so this happened again. And then he called me up and said, like, look, you're the health guy. I need help with this. He goes, I'm, you know, he got in a severe accident. He had, he was a soccer star. He was sales, young kid in his twenties, beautiful girlfriend. He's just having a good time. And then wham, gets hit. He's in the hospital, pins through all of his, broke his legs. He can't really, he's not the athlete he used to be. Cause he gets like Humpty Dumpty. He's trying to put himself back together again. And you really can't hundred percent after that type of a deal. Um, and I think from the car accident, there's some anxiety there. So anyway, I said, Izzy. What's the most you've ever made? He's like 8,000. I said, well, hey, for just for fun, let's just make a goal before the end of the six months in this coaching program that you're with me. You, you hit 10,000. He's like, okay. Two and a half months later, he hits 10,300. And he's like, out of, dude, I just hit 10,300. He's like, it's amazing. And I thought, I started thinking about that. And I'm like, yeah, well, when your health goes up, all boats lift. Your relationship gets better. Your career, right. you change those things. You start feeling better. And I was like, well, it makes sense because everything's connected. Your finances are connected. 
So I called up all my past clients. I had like 600 clients and quite a few of them were entrepreneurs, business owners, salespeople, right? Commission people in there. Not all of them, but some were. And um, the ones I got a hold of, I had them go back and do a, a check on income. And we noticed that in six months, there was a 21% increase in income by improving their health when they worked with me in our one-on-one -on -one coaching it. program. And we weren't coaching them. I never brought it up. I never brought up money once. Izzy was the only person. I just did that because I knew him really well. And I thought, well, this would be kind of fun, whatever. And I just mentioned it. I didn't give him a strategy. I didn't do nothing. It was just all health focused. And I thought I must have, maybe I forgot about it. I was going to get to it. I don't know, but he already, did, he accomplished it because he was, he had, when you change, when you clean up your cells, and I want everybody to get this, when your cells get cleaned up, just imagine your cells like clean and perfect, just as nature intended. And then you have automobile exhaust that you breathed in and the chemical fertilizers and Roundup and the paint off gassing and the crap in the water. And it's all, it's endless. That stuff is bioaccumulating on that cell. And remember, you have trillions of them. Now, if you have trillions of cells and they're all carrying around a backpack full of toxins and it's leaking on their back, that culmination of all those cells is you. You're walking around with a backpack full of toxins that are leaking into your back. That's what's going on. So when you remove that from the cells, you remove the burden, and the culmination of that is the backpack comes off of you and you feel lighter and you have more energy, you actually raise the vibrational frequency of that cell and the culmination of those cells, you're actually raising your vibrational frequency. You become more attractive in the marketplace. You more, you have more energy to make the calls and people just wanna do business with you. There's something special about him. There's something special about her. I don't know what it is. Honey, I really like her more than I like the other three people we met with. I wanna do business with her. There's something about her. That's the edge. That's the difference. And the beautiful part of it is, is that you get to have a higher quality of life while you're attracting more clients and making more money. It's, it's the biggest win-win 360 win you've ever seen. But a lot of people just don't get it because nobody's really explained it to them uh, so they can understand it and why it's so important. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting about cells is that um, not just what you put in it, in your body and what you apply to your skin and what's around you, but even your words, right? Like every oh, yeah. word that you say, your cells hear the words, every cell. And which is why the Bible says, you know, your words, it's the power of life and death, literally in yep. your words. I mean, you can determine whether or not you'll die young or, or live a long life yeah, totally. just with the words yeah. that you say. So there's a lot of power in just the words as well. I mean, it's, it's multi. That's why I use that statement priority, because uh -huh. well, I'm I'm looking at a health history form. Somebody fills it out and go through. And I was like, I said, you know why you're not healthy right now? There's only one reason you're not healthy, and they're like, why? I said, you haven't made your health a priority yet. Are you ready to do that? Because this is the fork in the road for you. Because I can give you all the tactics. Go do this. Go do that. But if you don't have it as a priority, because uh, we, we just had a guy right now that we pretty much had to just let him go. Cause he wasn't doing the work, right? It's not doing the work uh, excuse after excuse, after excuse, after excuse. And the coach called me up. She goes, what do you want me to do? I was like, let him go. We'll refund his money for the re remainder. Mm -hmm. He's not ready yet. I said, when it gets right. bad enough, you'd think it, he would because he was over 300 pounds. Yeah, but he did. Yeah. You know, it's uh, like, you can't help people that aren't ready to help themselves. So obviously he hasn't hit rock bottom yet. When he does, we'll be ready and ready to willing to help him. But all we can do is guide and share. Like, we've been through this ourselves. We know what it's like to go from, you know, where we were to where we are. And now all of our coaches are, are, you know, we've run a gauntlet of our own, whether it was fighting cancer, fighting serious gut issues and surgeries, whether it was fighting bulimia. All of our coaches have been through the gauntlet, come out the other end, and now we're just sharing what, what with our clients what we've learned. Yeah, and what, and what works. And I want to just say something, Whitney, because I, I loved what you were talking about. Um, you know, one of my, uh, one of my most favorite singers, Toby Mac has a song called speak life. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what it is that you're talking about. Right. Because, you know, the, the body and the mind and the cells and all that stuff, they are, they're all interconnected. Right. And it's amazing how often, and I, I deal with this with my son, he's an aspiring golfer. There it is. There it is, Tim. I got a chance to get my golf plug in. Hey, I actually sent you a TikTok golf thing. Did you see that? I text you back about Gary Woodland. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know the guy, but you saw that girl. She was like, 
no, I, don't know I what's said the proper that. term, but she was like, you know, she was challenged, handicap or so, whatever you call it, and she just drives the ball down there, right into the sand trap, blasts it out of that sand trap, and then it was like probably like a 20, 30 foot putt. Yeah, awesome. and she yeah. drops it. She drops it when she's out there with the crowd yelling and around her looking. I mean, she she nailed it. So that was number sixteen at TPC Stadium Course during the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Oh, so, so you I, could have been there. No, no, I was there. So did Gary, you see that girl do that, dude? That's what I'm saying. I text you back. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't read the text yet, dude. I'm I busy. get it. I get it. I get it. But so, oh, so I sent you something you already saw. Yeah, uh, that's three years old, by the way, just so you know. Oh, yes. well, I didn't know. It was on TikTok. It was brand new I, for me. I, trust me, I get it. Um, but but that was that was awesome, right? And and Gary Woodland, who was there, we used to sponsor him. My former company that I used to work with, we sponsored him. So I know Gary personally that was there with Amy. Um, Those pros better get, get – probably started worrying because she might be better than they are. Yeah, she was pretty. It was, it was, it was really pop, pop, that, boom right in. That whole story, <laughs> I'm just like, that whole story between Gary and and Amy is really, really inspirational. So, yeah, I, I appreciated you sharing that with me. But my point being about talking negatively to yourself, right? We have a tendency. You heard the phrase before. We're all our own worst critics, right? Can be. And we are. Sure. We absolutely are. And it's real easy to beat ourselves down. And the one thing that I talk about my son with is you're going to get plenty of haters out there. You don't need to be one of them, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be your own biggest fan because whether you believe it or not, right? Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. That's what I tell him all the time. So you have to be your biggest cheerleader. And that's hard to do, right? Easier said than done. But speaking life, speaking positively is so important for our own mental and physical health. I just wanted to throw that out there real fast. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So it's um, important. You what you what you think you, you, you think therefore I am, right? Sure. It's powerful. I'm moving towards that. Before I die, hopefully it's a long time from now. I'm gonna learn. I'm I'm just I, I'm so excited. That's why I have I just bought this whole book on yoga now i've been practicing yoga and a lot of people think going to a deal and doing some physical movements is yoga it's not there's a whole it's way deeper than all that and lining these five different energies and it's like i want to do that stuff and you can get to a point where you don't get sick you just don't get sick and this guy like um he referred to this one guy who was very very well known and this is why you want to take care of yourself and he would do these called asanas he would do like a thousand and eighty of them every day and he did that up until he was 90 and then he would only do 180 of them not because he couldn't because he just ran out of time so six days a week this guy's a a, a master yoga trainer instructor mentor guru swami whatever you want to call him but one day a week he was also trained in the art of being able to read people's pulse he was a doctor he's a healer and he would go into this village every day and from four in the morning he would sit down until seven or eight o'clock at night he would see 200 patients he did this every day for decades he'd go into the town take the train into town see 200 people he would sit down and people got away from thinking i was going in for a problem and seeing a doctor it was more of like a festival and you'd see this guy he'd read your pulse and he'd tell you what's wrong he would also tell you what's going to happen to you in 10 14 years from now and what you could do now to avoid it and get healthy and he'd prescribe herbs and do little stuff and different yoga postures and meditations they could do to heal themselves and off they would go well he's 84 years old two of his assistants were with him and they showed up sunday night at the train station and the railroad workers were on strike no trains running into the city he just takes off running down the railroad track leaves the assistants they didn't even know he left and um he runs 46 miles in the middle of the night shows up at 4 a.m sees 200 patients, helps them. And then later in the afternoon, the two assistants showed up and then told everybody what had happened. Like he ran here, he ran 46 miles, 84 years old. And there's so many stories like this of people like this. Like I have a living example right now. I know a guy in his eighties, like I talk about Dr. Gabriel Cousins, the guy can do 30 pull-ups who can do that, right? It wasn't too long ago, he did a rain dance. He did a freaking two day rain dance with no sleep. Remember, I, I, did I tell this story? No. Dude, it's crazy. 
It's like proofs in the pudding. So here he is. He's probably in his 70s at the time, and he befriends the local elders, the, the chief, the council and stuff for the local the Native American tribe in Arizona because he had – in Arizona, he had a clinic called the, the, the Tree of Life Clinic. It's closed now, and I think he's over in like Jerusalem or something over there doing something. He's world all over the place. Anyway, um, he's talking to these elders, and he's plant-based. He's a living fooder. He eats sprouts and sprouted nuts and sprouted seeds and sprouted grains and brown beans for this biophoton energy. And anyway, the chiefs all thought he was crazy. I mean, you don't eat meat? Like, we eat buffalo and, you know, all this stuff, right? And he's like, yeah, you need to eat plants. And they wouldn't listen to him. Well, he found out about this rain dance. Nobody had performed the rain dance in like 40, 45 years. And to, you have to be healthy to do it because you have to stay up for 48 hours and dance. You basically dance for 48 hours nonstop. So he's like, look, he goes, I want you. He goes, I'm going to do your rain dance. And then you guys are going to listen to me. So he does the rain dance in his late 70s, something like that, does it for two days. And then all the elders looked at each other and was like, okay, maybe we should eat plants. <laughs> I mean, the proof's in the pudding, right? Yeah. Back then they were healthy. They were moving their body. They were closer to nature. And now the Native Americans have, just like the rest of us, now there's grocery stores and all the food's screwed up and the water's messed up, right? Those are two examples right there of like what our potential is. There's people that are 100 years old running marathons. I mean, what are we doing? Why, why is it? So, it's not a mystery. This is so having good health is very simple. It's not hard. It's it's just really easy. It, and it shouldn't be a very difficult thing. And if it's very hard, you've been conditioned that way to think it's hard to give your power over to somebody else so they can tell you what to do. And what do they usually have for you? They have a pill. Don't change anything. Take this pill. Bye. And I, I'll spend 10 minutes with you. I got to go. That's not really – it's never going to work. Look around. It's not working. It just doesn't work. The it's answer is nature. The symptom. It's just treating the symptom rather than looking at the core problem. Yeah, and there's so much deeper. I mean people are just you know they're not happy in their relationships. That's why there's so much divorce. 74% of people are not happy in their career. They're just going for a paycheck. But you know, honor the job that you have now because it's providing an income and – Giving you contrast to let you know more of what you don't want so you can move towards. But people need to move. I mean, we need movement. You know, do you want yeah. to be an old stagnant pond that's got mosquitoes and leeches in it? Or <laughs> do you want to be a river that's running, that's clean, that you can drink out of? What do you want to drink out of? You want to drink out of a muddy pond or do you want to drink out of a river? Like, be a river. Get movement. And you, it's all going to start with, with your thought, like Wendy or Whitney said earlier, right? Okay. Uh, Whitney, did you have any last questions for us? Mm -mm. Good to go. All I'd right, like you change, look all so jacked up. We're good there. I'm a river. Let's go. All right. So, what did you what did you get out of the health segment? Was there anything that you learned today that you're going to go apply? Um, I've thought about the water thing for because a lot of the food and stuff that I'm doing in okay, a couple things. One, I'm already I fast regularly, like no, just a water fast. Um, and so. But I'm doing an anti-inflammatory fast starting for pa um, to honor Passover and um, Jesus' death and resurrection. And, but I'm going to start on Friday and do it for a week. And so I'm excited, really excited to do that. And I'm excited to see how my body um, reacts to that and my blood sugars. I'm going to look and I rent right now. So, you know, doing the water thing could be a little bit difficult. I... Uh, we didn't get into it, but I moved last year because I had a few break-ins into my house, so I had to move. And um, well, the, so, the the question to ask is is how can I make water easy for myself now in the situation? Yeah, I right? don't know renting. So I would probably yeah. get at least six get gallon glass jars and go to your local grocery store and at least get single purified water for twenty five to fifty yeah. cents a gallon. And that's I'm the like, cheapest, best. Yeah, that's a good idea. Next step up. Yeah, good call. Um, there's also a little filter. If you book your consult with Danusha at, um, at the mypurifiedwater.com, there is a, there is a purification system. That's like two, 300 bucks. It's real small and it mounts, right? It's really little. It mounts oh. on it and you can do a single purifier underneath, underneath your sink. Oh, okay. That's not, that's, that's another crazy, option too. That's not crazy expensive. No, no. But uh, if you want to do it right, like the way I have it, I have about an $1,800 triple purifier. And I have a $4,800 unit behind that. And right. I'm on my sixth water system in 11 years. So I always try to upgrade. If I find something new, but this combo's lasted me since fall of 2018. I'm still pretty, I mean, I'm high on water. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel great. 
And I know mm -hmm. by drinking that water, I'm getting more absorption of nutrients from the food I eat and from the supplements I take. I'm actually getting way more absorption of those nutrients. So I'm getting more bang for my buck um, from the money that I'm investing in the, my nutrient sources just mm -hmm. because my water's right. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So you save money sure. on food too because you don't need to eat as much because your cells get what right. they need with less chewing. Yeah. But you want to yeah. still chew your food well, right, Carter? Mm -hmm. Chew uh, your food. So, your food. so water purifier, that's an easy one. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, like I said, I was going to do that cleanse anyway, but now I'm just more motivated to do so. <laughs> cool. Nice. Cool. And if you're doing anti inflammatory stuff, check out our website. We have a product called Turmeric 100. It's a breakthrough in anti inflammatory. At, anti-inflammatory okay. it's like 50 pounds of turmeric root in a, in a two ounce bottle and it's went through a very special process to make it so it's super absorbable it'll actually you'll just see just it's okay. proofs in the pudding cool thank you yeah, yeah. proofs and, in uh, the turmeric yeah proofs in the in the turmeric exactly um hey and richards thank you so much uh we really do appreciate all of our listeners and everything and i want to go ahead and just say uh a huge thank you to Whitney Emanuel of Whitney Wealth there in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, where she's going to have two weeks of spring and then it'll be summertime for her. <laughs> um, we really do appreciate you coming on the show uh, and, and make sure to go to our website to see all of our other previous fantastic guests, just like Whitney today at www.thehealthandwealthpodcastshow.com and wherever you get your podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify, whichever way you get your podcast, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Health and Wealth Podcast. For my fantastic co-host, Mr. Tim James, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, uh, I'm Carter Wilcox, and CEO and founder of CSI Financial Group. Thank you very much for joining us for another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. And Whitney, thank you so much again for joining us. Is there any last thanks, bit Whitney? you want to say before we let all of our listeners go? Um. No, I just thank you for the time, gentlemen. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to chat with you. And I thank you for um, sharing with me your wealth of knowledge as well. So bless you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, and Richards, until, until next time, I'm Carter Wilcoxon for Tim James. Have a great and wonderful, abundant rest of your day and week. Until next time, and Richards, thank you. Hey, and Richards, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies. So tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.